Ukraine's president says he will address an urgent meeting of the group of seven G7 countries following Russia's missile strikes across Ukraine. Zelensky said in a Twitter post that he had spoken to German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who had agreed to hold the meeting. Germany currently holds the rotating G7 presidency. Agreed with Chancellor at Olaf Scholz of Germany holding presidency of G7 on an urgent meeting of the group, Zelensky tweeted. My speech is scheduled, in which I'll tell about the terrorist attacks by RF, the Russian Federation. We also discussed the issue of increasing pressure on RF and aid in restoring damaged infrastructure. French President Emmanuel Macron has promised to increase military aid for Ukraine during a call with his Ukrainian counterpart, Volodymyr Zelensky. The president spoke of his extreme concern about strikes that have caused civilian victims, Macron's office said in a statement following the pair's talks by phone on Monday. He reaffirmed his full and complete support for President Zelensky and the commitment of France to increase its support for Ukraine, in line with the needs expressed by Kyiv, including in terms of military equipment. Zelensky, for his part, said in a Twitter post that he had discussed the strengthening of Ukraine's air defense and the need for a tough European and international reaction to Russia's missile strikes with Macron during the call. Belgium's prime minister has condemned Russia's bombardment of Kyiv and other Ukrainian cities, calling the attacks reprehensible. It is an unaccepted escalation, Alexander de Croo tweeted, adding that the deadly missile strikes would strengthen Belgium's resolve to support Ukraine. Putin has said Russia's wave of attacks on Ukrainian cities was a response to terrorist action, including an explosion that rocked the Kerch Bridge linking Russia to the annexed Crimean Peninsula over the weekend. In televised remarks, Putin said Moscow had launched long-range missile strikes targeting Ukraine's energy, military and communications infrastructure on Monday. Speaking directly about the bridge explosion, he claimed it was obvious that the Ukrainian secret services ordered, organized and carried out the terrorist attack, and pledged a harsh response to any further attacks on Russian targets. If attempts continue to carry out terrorist acts on our territory, Russia's responses will be harsh and in their scale will correspond to the level of threats created for the Russian Federation. No one should have any doubt about that, Putin said. Kyiv has not directly claimed responsibility for the blast on the Kerch Bridge on Saturday. Al Jazeera's Hoda Abdul Hamid, reporting from a shelter in Dnipro, says that basements across the city have been busy since the airstrikes. We know that other shelters are also quite busy, too, she said. There's been a red alert ongoing since this morning all over the country, and this is a scene that I haven't seen or witnessed since the start of the war when Dnipro was a completely empty city, and no one was around. Local authorities are warning that things could get worse and at the moment, what we see, is a pattern that it is either civilian buildings being hit or critical infrastructure. United Nations aid chief Martin Griffiths has voiced confidence that a deal allowing Ukrainian Black Sea grains exports could be extended and even expanded despite Russia's latest attacks. Our view at the UN is we of course should seek its renewal, and I'm reasonably confident that we will see it renewed. But also that it needs to go beyond a four-month cycle, Griffiths told reporters at a news conference in Geneva in response to a question about the effect of the latest escalation in the conflict. We need to see it renewed for a year, he said. Poland's foreign minister has denounced Russia's missile strikes across Ukraine as an act of barbarism and a war crime. Today's Russian bombing of Ukrainian cities and civilians is an act of barbarism and a war crime. Russia cannot win this war. We stand behind you Ukraine. Zbigniew Rao tweeted. The European Commission has condemned Russia's missile strikes on several Ukrainian cities as barbaric and cowardly attacks. Peter Stano, a spokesperson for the European Union's executive arm, told a regular news briefing the strikes were a contravention of international humanitarian law and amounted to a further escalation of the war in Ukraine that was totally unacceptable. Referring to a complaint by Moldova that three cruise missiles fired by Russia had violated its airspace, Stano said using the airspace of neighboring countries to attack Ukraine was also unacceptable. EU foreign policy chief Josep Borrell had earlier condemned Russia's attacks. Such acts have no place in 21st century. I condemn them in the strongest possible terms. We stand with Ukraine. Additional military support from the EU is on its way, he tweeted. Mohamed Vol, reporting from Moscow, says Putin indicated in an address to Russia's Security Council that this is just the beginning. If more terrorist attacks, as he described them, happen, 
the response will be along the lines of what happened today and much more. He used the word harsh and said the strikes came from air, land and sea. So Russia is not holding any punches in this conflict anymore. In terms of the damage to the Crimea bridge, Vol explained, what happened at the bridge, by many analysts, is something that will play into the hands of Russians who have been waiting for something major to happen so it can expand beyond the front line, and that is what we've seen today. Putin is speaking to the anticipation and expectations of the Russians who have seen their troops partially decimated and pushed back by Ukrainian forces. Russian news agencies have quoted the country's defense ministry as saying Moscow's forces have hit all designated targets in a wave of missile attacks on Ukraine. The ministry said the strikes were carried out with precision-guided weapons and had successfully hit Ukrainian military sites, as well as communications and energy facilities, according to the news agency's reports. Italy is appalled by Russia's vile missile strikes on several Ukrainian cities, the country's foreign ministry has said. We reiterate our unwavering and steadfast support for Ukraine and its people, the ministry tweeted. Ukraine's National Police Service says at least 10 people were killed and 60 others wounded across the country in the Russian missile strikes. Police spokeswoman Mariana Reva said authorities were appealing to citizens to heed warning signals in the wake of the attacks. This morning showed how important it is to follow the discipline and all the recommendations given by the authorities. Therefore, at the first signal of an air alarm, you should go down to the shelter, because this is a matter of your life and health, she said. Russia had been planning Monday's missile strikes on Ukrainian cities since the start of October, Ukraine's defense ministry has claimed. According to the military intelligence of Ukraine, the Russian occupying forces received instructions from the Kremlin to prepare massive missile strikes on the civilian infrastructure of Ukraine on October 2 and 3, the intelligence arm of the ministry said in a statement. The military units of the Strategic and Long-Range Aviation received orders to prepare for the task of massive missile attacks. The objects of critical civil infrastructure and the central areas of densely populated Ukrainian cities were identified as targets. Putin has addressed Russia's Security Council following this morning's attacks. Here is a summary of his remarks. Putin justified the missile strikes as a response to terrorist acts by Ukrainian forces, including an explosion over the weekend on the Kerch Bridge linking Russia to the annexed Crimean Peninsula. He said Russia would respond, harshly, to any further Ukrainian attacks. Putin claimed a number of terrorist attacks and attempts at similar crimes had targeted Russian energy infrastructure since the war began. He accused Kyiv of having put itself on a par with international terrorist groups and said it was simply impossible to leave crimes of this kind unanswered. Putin repeated, without providing evidence, his assertion that Ukraine and its NATO backers were behind still unexplained ruptures to the Nord Stream gas pipelines which run from Russia to Germany under the Baltic Sea. Representatives of Russia are not allowed to investigate the causes of the explosions and the destruction of the international gas transmission systems passing along the bottom of the Baltic Sea. But we all know well the ultimate beneficiary of this crime, he said. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has condemned Russia's missile strikes on Ukraine, slamming the attacks as horrific. Spoke with Foreign Minister Dmitro Kuliba and condemned Russia's horrific and indiscriminate attacks on civilian infrastructure in Ukraine, Stoltenberg tweeted. NATO will continue supporting the brave Ukrainian people to fight back against the Kremlin's aggression for as long as it takes. Dmitry Medvedev, the former Russian president who is closely allied with Putin, has described Moscow's latest attacks on Ukraine as only the first episode. Medvedev, the deputy head of Russia's Security Council, said in a telegram post that Russia, along with protecting its people and borders, should aim for the complete dismantling of Ukraine's political regime. He alleged that the Ukrainian state in its current configuration with the Nazi political regime will continue to pose a permanent, direct and clear threat to Russia. Russia has repeatedly sought to cast the government of the Ukrainian president of Nazi inclinations, claims which have been mocked by Ukraine and its allies as absurd. Rory Challens, reporting from Kyiv, says Ukrainians will now be worrying whether the attacks seen this morning are a sign of things to come. Has Russia used up a huge amount of its precision weaponry and feels like it's made its point, as Vladimir Putin was putting it, or is this the beginning of something that's going to become more regular, he said. We just don't know the answer to that at the moment. The International Committee of the Red Cross, ICRC, has temporarily halted its work in Ukraine for security reasons following Russia's missile attacks 
a spokesperson for the aid organization has told the Reuters news agency. The ICRC has some 700 staff working at 10 locations across the country and delivers aid and medicine, including to the millions of people displaced by the ongoing conflict. The spokesperson's remarks came after the Norwegian Refugee Council also said that it had halted its aid operations in Ukraine until it was safe to resume work. Germany's foreign ministry has said that a high-rise office building that houses a German consulate in Kyiv was hit during Russian missile strikes on the capital. There were no officials present in the consulate at the time of the attack as it has been empty since the war in Ukraine broke out. No work has gone on in the building for months, a foreign ministry spokesperson told a news briefing, adding that the German government was in contact with officials in Kyiv to assess the extent of the damage to the site. Germany will deliver the first of four Iris TSLM air defense systems to Ukraine within days following Russia's barrage of missile attacks on the war-torn country, the country's defense minister has said. The renewed missile fire on Kyiv and the many other cities show how important it is to supply Ukraine with air defense systems quickly, Christine Lambrecht said in a statement. Russia's attacks with missiles and drones terrorize the civilian population in particular. That is why we are now providing support, especially with air defense weapons. At least 11 people were killed and 64 others wounded by Russia's missile strikes across Ukraine on Monday morning, the State Emergency Service of Ukraine says. The agency said in a Telegram post that four regions had also been left with no electricity following the attacks, Lviv, Poltava, Sumy and Ternopil. It added that the electricity supply had been partially disrupted in other parts of the country. National police had previously put the death toll from Monday morning strikes at 10. Dozens of explosions have rocked cities across Ukraine, including the capital, Kyiv, in an intensification of Russia's attacks that could spell a major escalation in the nearly eight-month war. This morning, 75 missiles were launched. 41 of them were neutralized by our air defense, General Valery Zaluzhny, commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, wrote on Twitter on Monday. The barrage of strikes killed at least 10 people and wounded 60, Ukrainian police said. Russian President Vladimir Putin said his country had launched long-range missiles against Ukrainian energy, military and communications infrastructure, in retaliation for an attack on the bridge linking Russia to the annexed Crimean Peninsula on Saturday. This morning, on the advice of the Defense Ministry and according to a plan from the General Staff, a massive strike was carried out with high-precision, long-range weapons on energy, military command and communications facilities in Ukraine, Putin said during a meeting with his Security Council. He repeated, without providing evidence, his assertion that Ukraine and its NATO backers were behind still unexplained ruptures to the Nord Stream gas pipelines which run from Russia to Germany under the Baltic Sea. Putin also accused Ukraine of attempting to carry out an attack against a nuclear power plant in Russia and against the Turk Stream gas pipeline running from Russia to Turkey. If such attempts continue there will be responses that will be harsh and correspond to the level of threats made against the Russian Federation, he added. Moscow's defense ministry said the strikes had achieved their aims. All targets have been hit, the defense ministry said in a statement. After the first early morning strikes in Kyiv, more loud explosions were reported in a number of other locations, including the western city of Lviv, near the border with Poland, as well as the city of Dnipro, closer to the front lines in the east. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Russia was trying to destroy us and wipe us off the face of the earth. The strikes came as the Kremlin reels from humiliating battlefield setbacks amid a Ukrainian counteroffensive in recent weeks. Kyiv city police said at least five people had been killed and 12 wounded in the capital, while a preliminary announcement by Rostislav Smirnov, an advisor to the Ukrainian Ministry of Internal Affairs, said at least eight people were killed and 24 were wounded in just one of the strikes in the city. Al Jazeera's Rory Challens, reporting from Kyiv, said the death toll was very likely to go up considerably. Kyiv hasn't experienced anything like this in months. People stopped paying attention to the air raid sirens, so it's a very, very different reality this morning, he added. The blasts took place in the Shevchenko district, a large area in the center of Kyiv that includes the historic old town as well as several government offices, Mayor Vitali Klitschko said. One of Kyiv's busiest road junctions was hit at the start of the morning rush hour, when commuter traffic was beginning to pick up. A massive crater was blown in the intersection. Cars were destroyed, buildings were damaged and emergency workers were on the scene. 
At least one of the vehicles struck near the Kyiv National University appeared to be a commuter minibus, known as a Marshrutka, which is a popular albeit often crowded alternative to the city's bus and metro routes. The Kyiv metro stopped running as people took shelter in its stations. Power and water supplies were knocked out in numerous areas. Nearby, at least one strike landed in the popular Shevchenko Park, leaving a large hole near a children's playground. Among the targets hit was a pedestrian bridge known as the Klitschko Bridge, a landmark in central Kyiv with its glass panels. Residents were seen on the streets with blood on their clothes and hands. A young man wearing a blue jacket sat on the ground as a medic wrapped a bandage around his head. A woman with bandages wrapped around her head had blood all over the front of her blouse. Air raid sirens sounded repeatedly across the country. Conflict Russia struck cities across Ukraine during rush hour on Monday morning, killing civilians and destroying infrastructure. The attacks seemed to be in retaliation for an explosion on the Kerch Bridge, which connects Crimea to Russia, that Moscow blamed on Ukraine. Russia said it is investigating the blast that partially damaged the 19 kilometers, 12 mile, bridge. Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shmygel said 11 infrastructure facilities in eight regions and the capital Kyiv were damaged. President Volodymyr Zelensky accused Russia of trying to wipe his country off the face of the earth. Russia's President Vladimir Putin warned Ukraine that there would be a harsh response if there were any further attacks such as that on the Crimean Bridge. Russian shelling destroyed an apartment building in the latest attack on civilian infrastructure in the southeastern city of Zaporizhia, Ukrainian officials said. Russian troops are coming closer to the strategically important eastern town of Bakhmut, a British intelligence update said on Monday. Traffic on the vital Kerch Bridge, a supply route for Russian forces, has resumed, while the Russian Transport Ministry, quoted by RIA News Agency, said nearly 1,500 people and 162 heavy cargoes had traveled by ferry across the Kerch Strait since the explosion. The external power supply to the Russian-occupied Zaporizhia nuclear plant has been restored, Ukraine's state nuclear company Energotum and the UN's nuclear watchdog said. Economy Diplomacy The United States's White House said it would continue to arm Ukraine but declined direct comment on the explosion that damaged the Kerch Bridge. The Kremlin praised OPEC Plus for agreeing on production cuts that countered the mayhem sown by the U.S. in global energy markets. Ukraine's economy shrank an estimated 30 percent in the first three quarters of 2022 from the same period in 2021, with bad harvest weather compounding the impact of the war, the economy ministry said. China's foreign ministry called for de-escalation in Ukraine after the explosions on Monday. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko said Belarus and Russia will deploy a joint military task force. Putin may meet Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan this week to discuss a Turkish proposal to host talks between Russia and the West on Ukraine, the Kremlin said. Group of seven leaders will hold a call on Tuesday with Ukraine's Zelensky, British Prime Minister Liz Truss's spokesman said.